Khattab, the fearless freedom fighter, the gentle general, the noble knight of Islam. He entered the world as ordinary souls do, bearing the gift of two eyes, two legs and a heart of gold. His parents named him Samir ibn Salih Abdullahi as suwailim He was indeed a precious gift from God Almighty. From his birth, he was enshrouded in the love and admiration of both of his parents. Born on the 26th of Muharram in the year 1389 after Hijrah, which coincides with April 14th, 1969 of the Christian calendar. He was reported to have been born in the northern province of Arar in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Samir, who would later be known by his nom de guerre, Khattab, grew to be an intelligent, sensitive and sensible young man, who had taken to serious studies while still in elementary school. He studied for a number of years at the Madrasa of Umar ibn al-Khattab in Saudi Arabia. During the weekend breaks, his father would take Samir and his brothers up to the mountainous regions where the world could be seen in the light of the splendid sun. Far away from the polluted clouds of the inner city, up in the mountains, where the birds of heaven could be heard in the wind, far away from the hustle and bustle of the crowded city streets. Up in the mountains is where the angel Gabriel met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, where Musa spoke to Allah, where heaven meets earth. The mountainous regions is where Khattab and his brothers would contemplate the beautiful creation of God. In fact, it was the natural environment in which Khattab's father would instruct his sons and educate them on various survival techniques that would serve to strengthen their spirits and to instill bravery and resilience in their young and tender souls. But like all adolescents, pure and untainted by the harsh realities of existence, Khattab nurtured very high ambitions for his future life. He would express his desire to pursue academic studies in the USA, where he intended to study for a PhD and to become a medical professional who would one day use his knowledge and skill to save human lives. Even in these childhood ambitions, Khattab's humanitarian inclinations and his kind-hearted personality shone through with a piercing clarity. Yet it was during these formative years, as an exemplary student in his homeland, that Khattab's youthful ambition and innocent dreams were being stripped naked by the sharp claws of reality. Khattab, like millions of children all over the world, grew up like a delicate rose, polluted by the poisonous and menacing spectacle of endless wars and devastating conflicts. A rose like too many others, deflowered of dreams and uprooted from a childhood of innocence, 
in a world seemingly full of injustice and burdened by endless violence. Sadly, as these wars continue to grow and spread like a malicious cancer in the Muslim world, none was as close to his heart nor as disturbing to his mind as the continuous screams that were reaching the innermost confines of his conscious heart. Broken screams from distant villages and civilian enclaves in Afghanistan. All of these atrocities were committed during the Soviet invasion. Khattab, like millions of conscientious human beings from all around the world, would agonize over the daily reports of violent assaults, brutal rapes, and the ruthless murder of innocent civilians in Afghanistan. People who are being dealt with the most cruel oppression by one of the most powerful military forces then known to the world. Reports were being brought back of innocent men and women who were being crushed to death by military tanks. This somber affair was accentuated by the continual oppression and transgressions being dealt daily to the Palestinian people. It was during this period in Khattab's adolescence that he and many others like him came to hear of the first Palestinian Intifada. Moved, shaken and disturbed by the sight of millions of refugees flooding the borders between Afghanistan and Pakistan, at the youthful age of 18 years old, Khattab had decided to ransom his extraordinary dreams and his high ambitions in order to help others rebuild their ordinary lives and to re-establish basic human rights in their ancestral homeland. Samir was an exceptionally sensible youth, one who possessed all the means but took none of the excuses to pursue his material ambitions. Unlike many of his peers who could ignore the glaring injustices that were being visited on the weak and helpless elsewhere in the Muslim world. This selfless approach and this genuine concern for the innocent children, the vulnerable women and the helpless elderly people in Afghanistan gave birth to Samir's noble and courageous decision to embark on the path once trodden by men of true greatness, men hailing from all cultures and all civilization, those peaceful yet dignified spirits that were compelled in the hour of hardship to march forth in times of need so as to bear the burden of justice and liberation, striving in support of the weak and the oppressed in order to repel the heavy hand of war and to struggle earnestly against the unbearable triple tyranny of death, destruction and degradation. At the age of 18, Samir left Saudi Arabia in order to participate in the humanitarian struggle against the violent subjugation of the local communities during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Yet despite his comfortable and passive upbringing, Samir was soon confronted with the harsh and inhumane realities of war and conflict.
During his first few weeks in Afghanistan, where the United States and other Western players had been instrumental in arming, financing and training the Mujahideen to expel the Russian forces and to restore peace and sovereignty to the region, Khattab was noted for his sharp intellect and his rapid progress through the ranks. It was during this time that he suffered severe battle wounds and subsequently lost his fingers and the ability to use his right hand. Yet despite his personal losses and the sacrifices he had made, Khattab never lost his humanity and he remained as selfless and generous as he was before the war had even started. He was remembered for his generosity and his kind actions towards his brothers in faith. His bravery knew no bound and his courage on the battlefield was beyond legendary. Khattab had escaped the clutches of death on a number of occasions, yet each time he expressed his unshakable faith in God by stating that his time had not yet arrived, that it was not written for him to die under those circumstances. It was not long before his courage and dedication came under the wary eyes of the secret services from behind the enemy lines. دخلوا العرب والأفغان وكلهم إلى جلال أباد فكان أحد القائد الأفغان دخل على موقع الشرطة أو المخابرات أو موقع تصنت الظاهر المكالمات فكان يقول ما رأيت إلا أوراق خطاب فعل خطاب كل يوم لازم خطاب فعل ضرب علينا فعل علينا كذا كل الأوراق كانت يقول كلها كلها مليانة خطاب 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 despite several attempts from his family members to draw him back to the safety and comfort of his former life back home. The spirit of Khattab remained firm and steadfast on this path. He continued to support the weak and uphold justice even to the farthest corners of the Muslim world. No heat, inconvenience or threat of death could deter this young lion from marching forth into the light of justice. Soon, the Russian army would be defeated and forced to leave Afghanistan. The battle was over for most of the liberating forces and it was time to go home. But this victory only signaled the beginning of a lifelong commitment for the young commander, Khattab. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Kanishna yata chichini ya nipiru yishu ni pasledni. Kaak Afghanistan. Following Russia's crushing defeat in Afghanistan, Khattab and a few of his fellow freedom fighters were alerted to the ongoing conflict in a neighboring country where Russian forces were still present. They went with the intent to support and liberate the small community of Muslims in the nation of Tajikistan, a small nation that had been neglected due to the attention being diverted to the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Khattab felt the pain and the agony of this neglected community. He therefore traveled there under great duress and difficulty, owing to the underdeveloped roads and infrastructure. He also found hardship due to the limited human and financial resources then available. Nevertheless, Driven by his unshakable determination and his firm courage, the young commander answered the call of this oppressed community in Tajikistan. He spent an entire year training the locals, helping them on self-defense techniques and also assisting them in making preparations so as to repel the brutal attacks from the enemy forces. In February 1995, Khattab began conducting a careful research on the condition of the Muslims living in a very isolated and neglected part of the Caucasus region. They occupied a very small and ambiguous republic known as Chechnya. Initially, Khattab was not very convinced that his men 
could make any positive contribution in that region. As it was being occupied and had come under the attack of Russian army for many generations, the local population was abandoned by the world community at large and there was really very little hope of making any lasting impact in that region with just a dozen or so young men. For the ordinary commander, this would have been the choice of least consideration, but not for Khattab. For he was a conscientious and soft-hearted young man who did not count the tanks of the enemy, nor did he count the bullets, but he counted the tears of the orphan children and the screams of the widowed women. He did not fear the mortars and the missiles that destroyed entire communities, but he feared the cries of the oppressed and the supplications of the old and the weak who had been abandoned with neither help nor support. Khattab was never motivated by anger nor by violent zeal. Even back home, he was never known for any criminal convictions. To the contrary, everything he did was motivated by his love and sincerity towards Islam and the Muslims and by his deep desire to remove injustices and aggression from the land, no matter who the perpetrators were. But despite all of this, it was only the words of an elderly woman in Chechnya that finally convinced him to participate in the Chechen liberation struggle. Following this vow to defend the life, honor, and rights of the weak and oppressed republic, Khattab began to train the young volunteers from within the small villages. He began by providing military training and guidance, and within a few months, these battalions were successful in repelling and retaliating against the elite Russian armed forces that had encroached into the region and were continuously lancing attacks on the local villages and peaceful communities. And on October 10, 1995, the Russian forces were effectively expelled from the mountainous regions of Vedeno by a small band of young freedom fighters. When news of this unlikely victory began to spread amongst the tribes and the habitations, more volunteers joined the struggle for freedom, and Khattab continued to encourage and strengthen their morale. In a rare interview, Khattab said that his only aim was to help liberate his fellow Muslims from the brutal rule of Russia. Since his arrival in the Caucasus in 1995, he had trained several young fighters in military maneuvers and self-defense strategies. Very Muslim, Above all other considerations, Khattab's main objective was to preserve the light of Islam in a land that had for many years been subjected to the godless tenets and influences of communism. كانت الانطلاقة الطيبة بعد انتهاء الجهاد وانتهاء دور القتال في أن يتفرغ المجاهدين لخدمة دين الله سبحانه وتعالى في المجال الدعوي. Khattab not only used the sword of truth against tyrannical forces, but he also made equal use of the pen in order to liberate the hearts and to illuminate the minds. 
Khattab followed the example of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, by educating and enriching the local communities following the horrors of war and violence. After the withdrawal of Russian troops from the region, Khattab immediately began to develop a program for educational and social reform in order to help the youth regain their morale and to instill a strong Islamic identity in the coming generations. Despite the clear military agreements agreed to by the Russian army, stating that civilians would be permitted to live peaceful and unhindered lives, and that no further military or financial provocation would be continued after their withdrawal. But the Russian army failed to keep their part of the promise, and the plans continued to extend their military expeditions even after the agreements. لم تنفذ شرط واحد مما تم التفق عليه فالحدود مغلقة والمطارات مغلقة والضغط الاقتصادي مستمر It will not be long before the Russian forces reassemble their ranks and gathered their troops for a second assault on the Chechen Republic The flames of war had long been fanned by the opposition despite the peace treaties signed and honored by the Muslim forces. Yet despite the agreed terms, the Russian forces invaded with a new resolve to crush any attempt for independence, and thus a second war was initiated. The enemy forces shattered the dreams and peaceful aspirations of the local village dwellers by encroaching on their land and destroying their livelihoods. The army bombed and burnt villages, shot and shattered the ordinary lives of innocent men and women, destroying the lives of a people, unprovoked and unconcerned. They had in fact made use of the peace treaty following the First Chechen War in order to consolidate their forces and prepare their army for a second wave of violence, terror and destruction. Peace was never their long-term objective, they simply had taken advantage of Khattab's peaceful resolution and humanitarian objectives in order to withdraw their troops unharmed and unmolested following their first defeat. But now, they would return to avenge their losses and to terminate any remnants of a Chechen uprising. According to an interview, by the Arabic news agency Al Wasat in an article published in issue 538 on March 26, 2002. Khattab's mother explains that prior to his birth, she had seen an auspicious dream in which groups of men and women gathered around a large basin of water that stretched as far as the eye can see. They raised their hands and made supplications to God their eyes were gazing towards the sky as they awaited the emergence of a new moon. They looked like those who came to Hajj from the Caucasus regions. She recalls having promised his father, in the dream, that God would grant them a child, one who would have a wide reputation and an agile body and strength. During his time in Chechnya, Khattab had touched the hearts of the locals and he had earned the respect of the president-elect, Zalim Khan. He was also known for his soft and tender speech towards the weak and the dispossessed, and he would even buy cattle for the orphans and for their caretakers. Khattab was noted for his immense appeal with the masses. He would take special care of those fighters who not only suffered from war, but also suffered from abject poverty. خارجية جاءت لكم قالوا جاءنا الصليب الأحمر وأعطوا لنا كم كيلو جرام ثلاثة كيلو جرام سكر 
لمدة سنتين قيمته يلا طحين 4 كيلوغرام توك ادير رزن ادوقس في طول طوال هذه السنتين مره واحده اعطوهم 4 كيلوغرام و3 كيلوغرام سكر شو ما اسرد بابنكا ما اسرد اثنين لتر الصلي بالله هذه المساعده الاغاثه الانسانيه العالميه Unlike the military leaders that ravage and oppress the very people they were supposed to liberate, Khattab lived amongst the people and mingled with them. He shared their sorrows at times of hardship and participated in their celebrations in times of happiness. His genuine concern and care for a people who were all but forgotten to the rest of humanity only demonstrates his deep empathy with the oppressed no matter who they were or how large the ranks of the oppressor was. نسبنا الناس هنا وخلاص حطينا القفل عليهم ما في مربعين عندكم هنا. Khattab learned the local language and even became fluent in their dialects. He even married a woman from the local tribe and fathered three beautiful children with her. With his charm and pious lifestyle and his awesome leadership abilities, Khattab was accepted by the entire community and he became like their very own son. <laughs> Khattab was indeed very young, but they had a sharp mind and contemplated deeply upon the reality of the world. He sacrificed his life and his ambitions to pursue a life of service for the Muslim Ummah. <laughs> والراتب والبيت والزوجة ولا أصبحنا كثرة فينا السمن وكثرة وربينا كروش بخمسة عشر متر ونسى وكثر النقاش وكثر الجدل وكثر وتركنا شيء عظيم أعز الله تعالى فيه الصحابة وهم حفاة عراة بدو ما في لنا مخرج إلا بأن نصدق مع الله تعالى ونصدق في تعاملنا مع قضايا المسلمين وأن يعد أنفسنا وإن علم الله فينا صدق فسيمن الله علينا after 15 long years of tireless sacrifice, selfless struggle, and sincere efforts towards defending and preserving the lives, honor, and properties of the impoverished and downtrodden Muslim communities in Afghanistan and Chechnya, Khattab's life was slowly coming to an end. Only 32 years old, he had already suffered from several wounds. He lost fingers on his right hand and had even been rumored to have been killed on 10 separate occasions within the last five years. Ibrahim Alori, a Dagestani postal courier, turned double agent who worked for the Russian secret services, had been posing as a close friend of Khattab's and served as his personal assistant. But in 2002, Ibrahim was sent by the secret services on a deadly assignment. His task was to assassinate his own brother and fellow Muslim. The would-be assassin was given a poison letter, supposedly from the mother of Khattab, addressed to her son. This was, of course, a deceitful and murderous act of treachery, one that would result in the assassination and murder of a respected and beloved leader. Chechen sources revealed that the letter was coated with a fast-acting nerve agent. It was also reported that the operation to recruit Ibrahim and to prepare him took him six months. On the night of March 19, 2002, when the letter was finally delivered to the unsuspecting victim, Khattab went into his tent to read the supposed letter from his dear mother. 
He emerged from the tent only half an hour later with a very pale face and was rubbing his face with the stump of his arm. Khattab had been poisoned and the effect of the poison was slowly draining him of life and energy. He soon fell into the arms of his bodyguards, but when he was able to gain control of himself for a brief period, Khattab immediately ordered his guards to release Ibrahim, who along with five others had been suspected of the murder. Sadly, only an hour later, Khattab felt the pain once more. This time, he lost total control of himself and collapsed into some nearby bushes. And a short while later, he breathed his last. Khattab lived an exemplary life of sacrifice and he pursued a just struggle against oppression. He lived a life larger than dreams and left behind him a legacy that will never be washed away by tears nor will it be swept away by tides of lies aimed at effacing his legacy. Yes indeed, Khattab did not meet death on the battlefield. But let no man say that death haunted or hunted Khattab. No. Let them know that it was Khattab who chased and confronted death wherever he found injustice, subjugation and humiliation. May Allah send his angels to escort Khattab to the highest ranks in paradise and may he be granted the eternal companionship of the highest prophets angels and servants of the truth. Приятно, пам-пам,